Salads and sandwiches. Probably the most patriotic Englishman will admit that, on the subject of salads, we can learn something from the French. During the last half century, a great improvement has taken place on this point in this country. Many years ago, it was the fashion to dress an English lettuce resembling in shape an old umbrella with a mixture of brown sugar, milk, mustard, and even anchovy and Worcester sauce, and then add a few drops of oil as if it was some dangerous poison like prussic acid not to be tampered with lightly. The old-fashioned lettuces were so hard and crisp that it was difficult to chew them without making a noise somewhat similar to walking on a shingly beach. In modern days, however, we have arrived at a stage of civilization in which, as a rule, we use soft French lettuces instead of the hard gingham-shaped vegetables, which somehow or other our grandfathers ate for supper with a whole lobster, seasoned with about half a pint of vinegar, and then slept none the worse for the performance. The first point for consideration, if we wish to have a good salad, is to have the lettuces crisp and dry. Old-fashioned French cookery books direct that the lettuce should never be washed. The stalks should be cut off, the outside leaves removed and thrown away, and the lettuce itself should then be pulled in pieces with the fingers, and each piece wiped with a clean cloth. This is not always practicable, but the principle remains the same. You can wash the lettuce leaves without bruising them. You can dry them by shaking them up lightly in a large clean cloth, and you can spread them out and let them get dry an hour or two before they are dressed. Another important point to be borne in mind is that a salad should never be dressed till just before it is wanted to be eaten. If by chance you put by the remains of a dressed salad, it is good for nothing the next morning. Finally, the oil must be pure olive oil of the best quality, and to ensure this, it should bear the name of some well-known firm. A good deal of the oil sold simply as salad oil, bearing no name, is adulterated, sometimes with cottonseed oil. Salad, French lettuce, plain. Clean one or more French lettuces, throw away all the leaves that are decayed or bruised, place these in a salad bowl, and, supposing we have sufficient for two persons, dress the salad as follows. Put a saltspoonful of salt and half a saltspoonful of pepper into a tablespoon. Fill the tablespoon up with oil, stir the pepper and salt up with a fork, and pour it over the lettuce. Now add another tablespoonful of oil, and then toss the lettuce leaves lightly together with a spoon and fork. Allow one tablespoonful of oil to each person. This salad would suffice for two. Be sure and mix the lettuce and oil well together before you add any vinegar. The reason of this is that if you add the vinegar first, it would soak into the lettuce leaves, making one part more acid than another. Having well mixed up the lettuce and oil, add half a tablespoonful of vinegar, mix it once more, and the salad is dressed. In France, they always add to the lettuce before it is dressed two or three finely chopped fresh tarragon leaves. Dried tarragon can be used, but it is not equal to fresh. If you have no tarragon, it is a great improvement to use tarragon vinegar instead of ordinary vinegar. Tarragon vinegar is sold by all grocers at six pence per bottle. It is also often customary to rub the salad bowl with a bead of garlic or rub a piece of crust of bread with garlic and toss this piece of crust up with the salad after it has been dressed. Garlic should never be chopped up, but only used as stated above. A good French salad is also always decorated with one or more hard-boiled eggs, cut into quarters long ways. These are placed on the top of the lettuce. Salad, English, lettuce. The ordinary English salad is made either with French or English lettuces, and is generally dressed as follows. One or two tablespoonfuls of cream or milk, a teaspoonful of made mustard, two tablespoonfuls of vinegar, pepper, and salt. There are many people still living in remote parts of the country who prefer this style of dressing. Salad, English, mixed. The old-fashioned English mixed salad generally consisted of English lettuce cut up into strips crossways, to which was added mustard and cress, boiled beetroot, chopped celery, spring onions, radishes, and watercress. 
It is by no means a bad mixture when dressed with oil, and of course it can be dressed at a l'anglaise. It makes an excellent accompaniment to a huge hunk of cheese, a crusty loaf, a good appetite, and a better digestion. Salad, mayonnaise. This is generally considered the king of salads, and it can be made an exceedingly pretty looking dish. Take two or more French lettuces, clean and dry them as directed above, and take the small heart of one lettuce about the size of a small walnut, uncut from the stalk, so that you can stand it upright in the middle of the salad, raised above the surface. Arrange all the softer parts of the leaves on the top of the salad so as to make as much as possible a smooth surface. Make some mayonnaise sauce, thick enough to be spread like butter, and mass this little mound in all the surface of the middle of the salad. Round it with a thin layer of the sauce so that it looks like the top of a mold of solid custard. Ornament the edge of the salad with hard boiled eggs cut in quarters and place between the quarter slices of pickled gherkins and stoned olives. Take a small teaspoonful of French capers, dry them on a cloth, and sprinkle a few of them about an inch apart on the white surface. Next, chop up very finely about half a teaspoonful of parsley and see that this doesn't stick together in lumps. Place this on the end of a knife and flip the knife so that the little green specks of parsley fall on the white surface. Next, take about half a salt spoonful of finely crumbled bread and shake these in a saucer with one or two drops of cochineal. This will color them a bright red and they will have all the appearance of lobster corral. Place these red breadcrumbs on the end of a knife and let them fall over the white surface like the parsley. The little red and green specks on the white background make the dish look exceedingly pretty. Before mixing the salad all together, add a tablespoonful of tarragon vinegar or lemon juice. Tomato salad. For making tomato salad, you require red ripe tomatoes. The smoother they are, the better, but the chief points are very ripe and very red. Never use those pink crinkly tomatoes which look something like milk stained with plum juice. If tomatoes are picked unripe and then allowed to ripen afterwards, they become rotten and worthless. Slice up half a dozen or more tomatoes. Sometimes it will be necessary to remove the core and pips, sometimes not. Add a little oil, a little vinegar and some pepper and salt. Tomato salad is one of the few that are very nice without any oil at all. Of course, this is a matter of taste. Some persons slice up a few onions and add to the tomatoes. In addition to this, you can add some slices of cold potatoes. In this latter case, heap the potatoes up in the middle of the dish in the shape of a dome, sprinkle some chopped parsley over the potatoes, put a border of sliced onion round the base, and then a border of sliced tomato outside that. This makes the dish look pretty. Many persons rub the dish or salad bowl with a bead of garlic. This is quite sufficient to flavor the salad, but never chop garlic for salads. Egg salad. Egg salad consists of an ordinary salad made with French lettuces with an extra quantity of hard boiled eggs. If you want to make the salad look very pretty on the top, cut up the lettuces and dress them with oil and vinegar in the ordinary way. Make the tops of the lettuces, which should be placed in a round salad bowl, as smooth as you can without pressing them down unnecessarily. Now take six hard boiled eggs, separate the yolks from the whites, powder the yolks and chop up the whites small. Sprinkle a ring of yellow round the edge of the salad bowl, say an inch in width, then put a ring of white round and place the remainder of yolk in the middle, almost up to the center. Have the center about two inches in diameter. We now have a yellow center surrounded by a broad white rim, as of course there is more white than yellow, and an outside yellow ring which meets the white china bowl. Reserve about a teaspoonful of pieces of finely chopped white and put them in a saucer, with a few drops of cochineal and shake them. This turns them a bright red. Sprinkle these red specks very sparingly on the white, and take about half a teaspoonful of chopped blanched parsley and sprinkle these green specks on the yellow. This makes the dish look pretty. German salad. German salad is made from cold boiled vegetables chopped up. In Germany, it is made, according to English ideas, from every vegetable you have ever heard of, 
mixed with a number of vegetables you have never heard of. In England, it can be made by chopping up boiled carrot, turnip, cabbage, cauliflower, potato, French beans, Brussels sprouts, all, celery, raw onion, raw apple, etc. In fact, in making this vegetable salad, the motto should be the more the merrier. In addition to this, you'll find that they add what is known as sauerkraut. This latter is not adapted as a rule to English palates. The salad is mixed with oil and vinegar in the ordinary way. The Germans adding much more vinegar than we should care for in this country. The salad is decorated at the finish with boiled beetroot. It is very pretty to cut the beetroot into triangles. The base of the triangle touching the edge of the salad bowl, the point of the triangle pointing inwards. Gut a star out of a good slice of beetroot and place it in the center of the bowl. Sprinkle a little chopped blanched parsley over the surface of the mixed vegetables. Endive salad. Endives come into season long before lettuces and are much used abroad for making salads. The drawback to endive is that it is tough. And the simple remedy is to boil it. Take three or four white hot endives, throw them into boiling water slightly salted. When they get tender, take them out and instantly throw them into cold water, by which means you preserve their color. When quite cold, take them out again, drain them, dry them thoroughly, and pull them to pieces with the fingers. Now place them in a salad bowl, keeping the whitest part as much as possible at the top. Place some hard-boiled eggs round the edge and sprinkle a little chopped blanched parsley over the white endive. You can, if you like, put a few spikes of red beetroot between the quarters of eggs. It is a great improvement to rub the salad bowl with a bead of garlic, or you can rub a crust of bread with a bead of garlic and toss this lightly about in the salad when you mix it. Salsify salad, boiled salsify makes a very delicious salad. Take some white salsify, scrape it, and instantly throw it into vinegar and water, by which means you will keep it a pure white. Then, when you have all ready, throw it into boiling water, slightly salted. Boil it till it is tender. Throw it into cold water, and when cold, take it out, drain it, and dry it. Cut it up into small half-inch pieces, or put it in whole in sticks into a salad bowl. Sprinkle a little chopped blanched parsley over the top. Dress in the ordinary way with oil and white French vinegar, and be sure to use white pepper, not black. If white wine vinegar is objected to, the juice of a hard fresh lemon is equally good, if not better. Potato salad. Potato salad is generally made from the remains of cold boiled potatoes. Of course, potatoes can be boiled on purpose. In which case they should be allowed to get cold in the water in which they were boiled. New potatoes are far better for the purpose than old. Cut the potatoes into slices and place them in a salad bowl with a little finely chopped blanched parsley. You can also add some finely chopped onion or shallot. If you do not add these, you can rub the bowl with a bead of garlic. Sprinkle some more chopped parsley over the top of the salad and ornament the edge of the bowl with some thin slices of pickled gherkins. A few stoned olives can also be added. Dress the salad with oil and vinegar in the ordinary way. Asparagus salad, cold asparagus makes a most delicious salad. It is needless, perhaps, to say it is made from cold boiled asparagus. The best dressing for asparagus salad is somewhat peculiar, and is made as follows: take say an ounce of butter, put it in a saucer, and melt it in the oven till it is like oil. Now mix in a teaspoonful of made mustard, some pepper, salt, and a dessert spoonful of vinegar. Stir it all together, and as it gets cold, it will begin to get thick. Dip all the green part of the asparagus in this, and lay the heads gently without breaking them in a vegetable dish, with the white stalk resting on the edge of the dish and the green part in the middle. Let the salad get perfectly cold, and then serve. Of course, the sauce clings to the asparagus. The asparagus is eaten with the fingers like hot asparagus, a custom now generally recognized. Artichoke salad. This applies to French artichokes, not Jerusalem. In France, artichokes are often served raw for breakfast on a plate with a little heap of chopped raw onion 
and another heap of chopped capers or parsley. The Frenchman mixes a little oil or vinegar on his plate, adding the onion, etc., according to his taste. The leaves are pulled off one by one, the white stalk pot dipped in this dressing, and then eaten by being drawn through the teeth. The artichoke bottom is reserved for the finish as a bon bouche, something like a schoolboy who would eat all the pastry round a jam tart, leaving the centre for the finale. Beetroot Salad In boiling beetroots, be careful not to break them, or else they will bleed and lose their colour. When the beetroot is boiled and cold, peel it and cut it into thin slices. It can be dressed with oil and vinegar, or vinegar only, adding pepper and salt. Some persons dress beetroot with salad dressing in which cream is used instead of oil, but never use cream and oil. To mix cream and oil is like mixing bacon with butter. Cucumber Salad Peel a cucumber and cut it into slices as thin as possible. We might almost add thinner if possible. Mix it with a little salt and let it stand, tossing the cucumber about every now and then. By this means you extract all the water from the cucumber. Drain off this water and add plenty of oil to the cucumber, and then mix it so that every slice comes in contact with the oil. Now add a little pepper and a very little vinegar and mix it thoroughly. If you add vinegar to cucumber before the oil, some of the slices will taste like sour pickle as the vinegar soaks into the cucumber. Cucumber should be always served very cold and is best placed in an ice chest for an hour before serving. Some people put a piece of ice on the top of the cucumber. French Bean Salad Cold boiled French beans make a very nice salad. A little chopped parsley should be mixed with them and the salad bowl can be rubbed with a bead of garlic. Some people soak the beans in vinegar first and then add oil. This would suit a German palate. A better plan is to add the oil first with pepper and salt, mix all well together and then add the vinegar. Bean Salad Cold boiled broad beans make a very nice salad. Rub off the skin so that only the green part is put in the salad bowl. Rub the bowl with garlic, add a little chopped parsley, then oil, pepper and salt. Mix well and add vinegar last of all. Haricot Bean Salad This can be made from cold boiled dried white haricot beans. Add plenty of chopped parsley, rub the bowl with garlic, mix oil, pepper and salt first, vinegar afterwards. The nicest haricot bean salad is made from the fresh green beans met with abroad. They can be obtained in this country in tins, and a delicious salad can be had at a moment's notice by opening a tin, straining off the liquor, and drying the little green beans, which are very soft and tender, and dressing them with oil and vinegar in the ordinary way. A little chopped parsley or garlic flavouring by rubbing the bowl can be added or not, according to taste. Celery and Beetroot Salad A mixture of celery and beetroot makes a very nice winter salad. The beetroot, of course, is boiled, and the celery generally sliced up thin in a raw state. It is a great improvement to boil the celery till it is nearly tender. By this means you improve the salad, and the celery assists in making vegetarian stock. Watercress Watercress is sometimes mixed with other salad, but when eaten alone requires no dressing, but only a little salt. Dandelion Leaf Salad Considering that the root of the dandelion is so largely used in medicine for making taraxacum, it is to be regretted that the leaves of the plant are not utilised in this country as they are abroad for making salad. These leaves can be obtained in London at a few shops in the French colony of Soho. The leaves are washed, dried, placed in a salad bowl, and dressed with oil and vinegar in the ordinary way. Cauliflower Salad The remains of a cold boiled cauliflower makes a very good salad if only the white part be used. It can be mixed with the remains of cold potatoes, some chopped blanched parsley should be sprinkled over the top, and it can be dressed with oil and vinegar in the ordinary way, or it can be served up with a sauce made from oiled butter, similar to that described for dressing cold asparagus. Mustard and Cress This is somewhat similar to watercress. When served alone, it is generally dipped in salt and eaten with bread and butter, but it is very useful to mix with other kinds of salad. Hop Salad In Germany, 
A very nice salad is made from young hops, which are grown very extensively in America and Germany, as English brewers are well aware. The hops are picked when quite young before they get leafy. They are then boiled till nearly tender. They can be dressed in the English fashion with oil and vinegar, or in the German fashion with vinegar and sugar. Onion salad. Few people are aware of what an excellent salad can be made from the remains of cold boiled Spanish onions. Spanish onions can generally be bought at a penny a pound. They are mild in flavor, very wholesome, and contain a great deal of nourishment. Take a couple of cold boiled Spanish onions, pull them into leaves after they are quite dry, and dress them with a very little oil and vinegar. Italian salad. This is a very delicious salad met with in Italy. It consists of a great variety of boiled vegetables, which are placed in a mold and served in aspic jelly. This latter, however, is not allowed in vegetarian cookery. A very good imitation, however, can be made as follows. First, take as many cold vegetables as you can, consisting of new potatoes, sliced and cut up with a cutter into pretty looking shapes. You can also take green peas, asparagus tops, cold boiled cauliflower, French beans, beetroot, etc. These vegetables should be dressed with a little oil, tarragon vinegar, pepper and salt, and can be placed in a mold or plain round basin. This basin can now be filled up with a little water, thickened with corn flour, hot. When it is cold, it can be turned out and sent to table in the shape of a mold. Melon Salad Melon is sometimes served abroad as a salad, and a slice of melon is often sent to table at the commencement of dinner to be eaten with a little salt, cayenne pepper, and sometimes oil and vinegar. Salads Sweet Apples, oranges, currants, pineapple, and bananas are sometimes served as salads with syrup and sugar. They make a very nice mixture or can be served separately. When preserved pineapples and tins are used for the purpose, the syrup in the tin should be used for dressing the salad. Whole ripe strawberries are a great improvement, as also a wine glass full of brandy and a lump of ice. Sandwiches There is an art in cutting sandwiches, a fact which persons in the habit of frequenting railway restaurants will hardly realize. A tinned loaf is best for the purpose if we wish to avoid waste. The great thing is to have the two slices of bread to fit together neatly, and there is no occasion to cut off the crust when made from a well rasped tin loaf. First cut off the crust from the top of the loaf, which of course must be used for some other purpose. The best use for this top slice is to toast it lightly on the crummy side and cut it up into little pieces to be served with soup. Next take the loaf, cut off one thin slice evenly, and let it fall on its back on the board you are using. Now butter very slightly the upper surface. Next butter the top of the loaf, cut another thin slice, and, of course, these two pieces of bread will be perfectly level, and if the two buttered sides be placed together, will fit round the edge exactly. Tomato Sandwiches Cut some very ripe red tomatoes into thin slices and cut them parallel with the core, as otherwise you will get them in rings from which the core will drop out. Sprinkle some thin slices of bread and butter with mustard and cress, Dip the slices of tomato into a dressing made with a little oil, pepper, and salt well mixed up. Put these between the bread and butter and cut them into squares or triangles with a very sharp knife. These sandwiches are very cool and refreshing and make a most agreeable supper after a hot and crowded ballroom. If you wish to have them look pretty, pile them up in the center of a silver dish and place a few ripe red tomatoes round the base on some bright green parsley. Place the dish in an ice chest for an hour before it is eaten. Mustard and Cress Sandwiches Place well-washed and dried mustard and cress between two slices of bread and butter, and trim the edges. It is best to pepper and salt the bread and butter first. Pile up the sandwiches on a silver dish, and sprinkle some loose mustard and cress round the base. Egg Sandwiches Cut some hard-boiled eggs into very thin slices. Season them with pepper and salt and place them between two slices of thin bread and butter. Cut the sandwiches into triangles or squares. Pile them up in a silver dish. Place plenty of fresh green parsley around the base of the dish and place some hard-boiled eggs cut in halves on the parsley, which will show what the sandwiches are composed of. 
Indian sandwiches. These are exactly similar to the above, with the addition that the slices of hard-boiled eggs are seasoned with a little curry powder. If hard-boiled eggs in halves are placed round the base of the dish, each half egg should be sprinkled with curry powder in order to show what the sandwiches are. Mushroom sandwiches. Take a pint of fresh button mushrooms, peel them, and throw them into lemon juice and water in order to preserve their color. Or else, take the contents of a tin of mushrooms, chop them up, and stew them in a frying pan very gently with a little butter, pepper, salt, a pinch of thyme, and the juice of a whole lemon to every pint of mushrooms. When tender, rub the mixture through a wise sieve while the butter is warm and the mixture moist. Add a teaspoonful of finely chopped blanched parsley, spread this mixture while still warm on a thin slice of bread, and cover it over with another thin slice of bread, and press the two slices of bread together. When the mixture gets quite cold, the butter will set and the sandwiches get quite firm. The bread need not be buttered, as the mixture contains butter enough. Pile these sandwiches up on a silver dish, surround the dish with plenty of fresh parsley, and place a few fresh mushrooms whole, stock, and all round them, as if they are growing out of the parsley. Cheese Sandwiches Oil a little butter, add some pepper and salt, and a spoonful of made mustard, and a pinch of cayenne pepper. When this mixture is nearly cold, use it for buttering some thin slices of bread, and before it is quite cold, Sprinkle them with some grated parmesan cheese. Put the two slices of bread together and press them, and when cold, cut them into squares or triangles. Place plenty of fresh green parsley round the dish, and if you are using hard-boiled eggs for other purposes, take the end of the white of egg, which has a little cup in it not much bigger than the top of the finger, and put a little heap of parmesan cheese in each cup. Place a few of these round the base of the dish, on the parsley, in order to show what the sandwiches are composed of. Cream Cheese Sandwiches Chop up some of the white part of a head of celery very fine and pound it in a mortar with a little butter. Season it with some salt. Use this mixture and butter some thin slices of bread. Place a thin slice of cream cheese between these slices. Cut the sandwiches into squares or triangles with a very sharp knife and pile the sandwiches up on a silver dish. Surround the dish with parsley and place a few slices of cream cheese cut round the size of a half penny round the base. Stick a little piece of the yellowish-white leaves of the heart of celery in each piece. 